Dean Semler is one of Australia's most experienced and versatile cinematographers. He's been shooting film for over 30 years and has covered a broad spectrum, from documentary and ethnographic films to commercials and features, culminating in his 1991 Academy Award for Cinematography on the feature Dances with Wolves. Dean took time out of his busy schedule to come into the film school and hold a masterclass in studio lighting for cinematography students. Thanks, uh, come through here, Michael. Cheers. <clears throat> the aim of the workshop was to demonstrate four different approaches to shooting firelight scenes, but also provided the students with an insight into the way Dean approaches his work as a cinematographer. Enjoying the moment and action coming up. Right. As Dean's most recent experience with lighting for firelight was on the film Dances with Wolves, the cinematography and design departments at the film school recreated the interior of a teepee so Dean could approach the lighting in the same way he had done on Dances with Wolves. The interiors uh, of the teepees were all fairly simple lighting setups. Kevin liked to use two cameras all the time. He loved to use two cameras. And uh, a lot of the times his wide shots would be here and the close-ups would be in there, you know, and he... Uh, so it was a matter of people looking fairly good. The problem you got with firelight is that it generally comes below people and therefore it gives some ugly shadows. It's sort of... Um, it's not the most flattering light, you know, it's not Hollywood lighting by any means, you know, where you want to come in over or from the side, it comes in underneath and it's quite an ugly light. But it looks very real and we went with it. Um, the problems you have with it, which you see when you get in there, are shadows. If people's hands are moving, you get shadows all over their faces. But the thing is not to worry about it, make it work for you and uh, take it for being real and it's, uh, you know, make it work for you instead of against you. I think if we can put in, um, you know, we can get in some of our totas. I don't know how many you've got. We might... I've got a dozen. We've got a dozen, have we? Oh, yeah. good, all right. Well, we can, we can hide maybe three batches of... three batches of three, so that's nine in all, around this perimeter here. Down low, we'll hide them behind the rocks, we'll have the fire going, but we'll actually light it with the totas. And we'll put full 85, full 85 on top of them as well. So it's tungsten plus full 85, so it's really warm. Mm -hmm. And we'll go with our overhead. That's, uh, that's, that's that up there. It's a five. It's a five tungsten. Yep. And we might, uh, might just add like a little bit of blue to that as well. That'll be just ambience, just softest, softest ambience on the top of the head. And you see in some of those shots in there, the, the black hair with the slight yeah. blue tinge is quite nice on it there. One of the problems lighting with real firelight I've always found is that you have to have the fire up so high that A, it becomes very uncomfortable for actors. Uh, it becomes a problem for sound. And also you tend to get, particularly on anamorphic lenses, you tend to get that terrible, unsightly anamorphic flare, that, that elliptical red flare that you can get from firelight. And you can't cut it without cutting the fire, but so that's normally a, something you have to fight a little bit. The first approach to lighting involved several lights. Nine total lights were bunched around the fireside, some on top of each other. The lights were patched in groups of three through three different flicker boxes. The pulse of each of the flicker boxes ran at a different speed to produce an irregular flicker pattern. Full 85 gel was used on the total lights to give extra warmth and help match the colour of the natural fire in shot. At the top of the TP, a 5K tungsten Fresnel was shone through a diffusion frame. Half blue gel was used to contrast with the warmth of the firelight. I'll pick a skirt around that. No, that's, that's, that's probably a good height to start. Two misers with full 85 gel were used on either side of the TP door to provide a backlight as the actor moved in. Outside the TP, a 10k Fresnel was used direct. A half blue gel was added to make the source cooler and a tree branch was used in front of the light to break the harshness of its direction with some shadows. The time setting up provided plenty of opportunities for Dean to talk with the students about his experiences as a cinematographer. With colour temperature meters, I might pull it out occasionally. I find the best judge is your eye. 
If it looks good to your eye and it feels right to your eye, you've generally got it. Knowing your limitations of your stomp, uh, it's... Um, I worried about colour temperature a lot initially. I remember the first day I got my meter, I was shooting in a hairdressing saloon, and um, the walls were all apricot, apricot colour, and I would never have worried about it in my life. And I thought, I've got this new machine, let's pull it out and use it. So I pulled it out and it said something horrible, like, all your colours are going to be terrible. And it flashed and said, yeah. don't shoot this. And <laughs> so you start adjusting and adding quarter blue and adding a bit of magenta and adding a bit of... And it was just so ridiculous. It was such a waste of time. I should have just shot it as it was, because it would look the same anyway. The first camera setup was used to bring the actor from outside the teepee through an opening to inside where the other actors were seated around a fire. It was a difficult shot, tracking forward and craning down to reveal the interior of the teepee and provided a challenge for lighting. Like you're a very slow aperture pull, so it's like your eyes adjusting to the light inside, which might be effective. We can do it over, over three or four seconds. You know. So I'm going to aim for a fair stop outside of maybe eight or 11 and go for maybe a 2, 8 or 4 inside, so we can just, just do a little slow aperture pull as we push inside. It's not an exposure adjustment, it's an eye adjustment. There's a difference, you know, if we're going to do an exposure adjustment, we do it quickly as we went in. But I think we go in, it's dark, and then we slowly open up. Oh yeah, that's good. That's great, great, great. There's no need to be any... Um, any closer than that. Uh, that's fabulous. In fact, let's pull back a bit. We can make it a little bit wider and we'll get some nice value out of this set. Too much. Was that one notch? Two, eight, four to five, six. Four to five, six. Well, so the overall reading, the range of the flicker yeah. is from roughly two to about five, six, but generally in the in the just short of 2.8, just short of 5.6, mm -hmm. the flicker is starting at like about 2 and 2 thirds and going to about 4 and 2 thirds. Mm -hmm. So rather than have it too hot, we'll expose it 4 and a, I think 4 and a third might be a better stop. 4 and a third. Mm. Which means it's going to go a little bit over and quite a bit under. A little bit more under than it will over. Mm -hmm. Just the turn you do. Okay, okay thanks. The same speed and energy we had in the last That's take. the first setting. Okay, here we go. And rehearsing, framing up. And action, Scott. Action inside. And you decide to go. Okay, I'm going to do it. Scratch. And straight in. And pushing in now, gang, tilting down, right down to his boots. See his boots. And sit down, Scott. And we should tilt up a little bit faster at the end, but that's lovely apart from that. Let's do one more. Action inside. Action, Scott. Go, go. Michael. Michael. Horse. What's the word for horse? Horse. And cut. Good. Very good. Speed. Action inside. Action, Scott. There was a great shot this morning, the, the wide shot coming through the door. Mm. Just so full. You can see how that uh, anamorphic frame is so beautiful if, yeah. if you've got you know, edge to edge information in it. But you can see how also it's important in a wide shot like that if you've got a hero in the shot. You've got to just light them up a tiny bit to pull them out because it's such a big screen to look at. I should have maybe hit up Dunbar with just his own separate little, just to pull him out a bit more. I came up through the ranks of documentary and news recording events, which learns, which teaches you to shoot fairly quickly, uh, and also to be 
one of the greatest assets, I think, in being a documentary cameraman or news camera is to be as inconspicuous as possible. And I think that all comes with learning and with doing it for many years. And then moving into the, um, moving into the drama side of it, my earlier dramas were, were sort of based on that documentary style a lot. Uh, a Good Thing Going, for instance, uh, was a drama shot like a documentary, which had a lot of balls, it was very gutsy. And then moving gradually onto features that needed more work and then doing commercials and seeing the whole commercial side of it. And the way you have to spend so much time lighting a packet of cigarettes or lighting a packet of cornflakes, where you can spend four hours lighting a packet of cornflakes. And I've seen agency guys hand picking cornflakes out of a giant bag, hero cornflakes. I want 50 for a bowl, hours and hours of that sort of stuff. But my love now is drama. And the sort of films I've been doing, I think, have all been non-gloss pictures, they'd be fairly real, like Dances with Wolves. Uh, tell you what, let's, for the hell of it, make it a 75. I think it's a 75 back in the back. Ian, that's looking terrific. That shadow behind is working bloody well. Uh, on which? On uh, Scott. Um, well, I'm just getting it under his chin, and it's quite a nice effect. Um, let's, let's see you're looking at him. Scott, take your... Do a little rehearsal with the hands and the dialogue. Shunkawaka. Shun. Sorry. Shunkawaka. 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 Morse. Buffalo. Skinner. Buffalo. Cut. Not bad. Zooms are unbelievably handy. It's, it's simply that, taped into that, and you can forward and reverse, zoom in, zooming in and out. You can also change your speed. Yeah, and it's a great way to operate if you're doing, uh, you know, unplanned stuff. Mm. Even in drama where people might be going overboard, you might have Nick Nolte screaming down the lens and forgetting where in the hell he is, you know, what country he's in, let alone what mark he's supposed to be on. So to give yourself the latitude, then a director will be grateful forever if you manage to get that performance. Mm. If you don't get it because then you were frightened to do something, you do it again, you might never get that performance. In again. those situations, you'd have to go to a fluid head and then... Yeah, you that. can't do it on wheels. Yeah. And I've tried to do it on wheels where you're here and you say to the uh, focus pull and zoom in a bit, zoom in, no, no, zoom out, no, slower, slower, faster, in it, in it. Yeah. It's all over. Yeah. You've got to understand what's going through an actor's mind, how important it is for an actor, how important it is for a director to get that performance out of an actor. And I've seen actors fall apart because they've been technically confused. They've had to hit this mark, they've had to get to here, they've had to watch out for that. They've... And I think you could put too many, uh, too many restrictions on them and I think performance has to suffer. And this is uh, a big close up, we're right in tight on you. So, uh, but don't let it inhibit your movements. Do exactly what you did before. It means your hands to be seen <clears throat> without being ridiculous can cross your face. You can do things right in front of your face. And let's, uh, everybody ready, nice and quiet, and roll. Camera's rolling. Action. I saw an eagle today. Eagle. 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 Laugh, give eagle. him a smile. Eagle. <laughs> eagle. Eagle is eagle. Eagle, okay, and eagle. doorway. Eagle. Eagle, eagle. Look out the door now. And cut. Whereby shooting a, you know, a face which had to be a glamour face. So therefore you didn't want the light underneath, hard light. We put them through a four foot frame. So you have like six or eight lights flickering into a four foot frame. You're still getting a firelight effect, but you're getting a very soft firelight effect, a more flattering firelight effect. Like here. So the bottom of the frame's like, finish the bottom of the frame, James. Bottom of frame here. The next approach to lighting was for a softer effect. Two 1K pups were shot into a 4x4 trace frame set just above the level of the camera. I'd be kicked off the set if I did this in America. I'd walk. As with the first setup, the lights were put through separate flicker boxes to give an irregular flicker pattern. Full 85 gel was used to match the colour of the fire. 
Finally, the flame bar was brought up to add some real flicker at the bottom of frame. Background, because the light source is bigger, it carries, it carries further and more evenly, so the stop difference between there and there is not as great as it was with a hard light. So I'm going to try and cut, it's harder to cut. So we'll have to get the flags right into here. It still looks like firelight, but it comes up to give them better modelling. And then there, is, there are no problems in matching? No, 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 because the shots are so so different. I mean, we're right in there yes. now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, really so that's your position pretty well there, Michael. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a last minute <gasps> stop. Uh, OK. Yeah. Don't worry, gang. Don't worry. We're all right. We've got a four. Make it a four on the money. What's the one? Four at 320 ASA. Yeah. It's OK. Five, six and a quarter at 320. All right. And standing by. You happy, Michael? Same as before. James, is that flying too high for you? No, that's good. OK. And that's the flicker happening there. Yeah, a bit of that as well is lovely. Not too low on them. Uh, Occasionally drop right down if you like, but don't hold it down there for long. That's good, Ian. Terrific. Yeah. And here we go. Roll. Speed. And action. How do you say eagle? Eagle. Eagle. Um, eagle. eagle. Uh, uh, wings. Uh. Yeah, yeah, eagle, eagle. eagle. Wombly, 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 woggly. Wobbly. Yeah, it seemed to flatten it out once you come in with that glamour lighting, the straight over the top, but uh, really lost his character. You lose all of his, uh, you know, that sort of magic that was in, it becomes fairly bland. So. Mm. And um, what you said about, I mean, the straight fire light was true. I mean, it, there was less, mm. there was hardly Less any flicker. flicker there. <laughs> but I prefer with more flicker, actually. The real it's flicker, it yeah. It gives you, gives you... Yeah. And you see a lot of films where they're so beautiful that you really tend to forget what the story's about. You know, if you get, uh, if you get totally captivated by an image, but you forget what the drama is within it, then I think you've gone a step too far. And even though the images in Dances with Wolves are beautiful, they're real. Nothing is artificial. None of those images are a, a fake. None of them are saying, wow, look at this fabulous shot I've done. It's simply been a beautiful landscape or a, you know, a beautiful something that's been there. I'm not into filtering right. a hell of a lot at all. I didn't have anything fancy. I didn't have any corals, didn't have any sunset grads, rainbow grads, rainbow filters, nothing. Up in there. Oh look, that's gonna, that's going to work, gang. Just to give you a bit more, I think what we might be able to do, we'll have it so that you've had your wombly chat, and you want to leave the two lovers alone. So you will simply, at a point, say, "Okay, that's enough," and you will walk out and take Margaret with you, and that'll be a rounded-off little sequence, I hope. So we, now we know what you were thinking about when you were pacing up and down outside the teepee. Let's try that movement again, just to make sure it all fits. Ian, what we'll do, mate, is just um, just go with a firelight. We'll get Sasha to get that up. But we can actually hit the 10K up now and see what that's doing. I think we'll have to do a combination real flap effect and cutter in front of it again. So we don't have any spill in there. All right. As the camera setup was a wide shot looking from above, the total lights around the edge of the fire would have clearly been in shot. So the shot was lit primarily with the natural light coming from the flame of the fire. The 5K with half blue gel at the top of the TP provided a low level bluish fill. Down, 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 down. Down. Way! Up, 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 up. 
Outside the teepee, the 10K with half blue gel was placed on the floor to shine directly into the teepee when the door flaps opened. Two cutters were operated manually to ease the transition as the light flooded into the teepee. The final touch was to set the natural fire, providing the main light source in shot. Just uh, wind it down a little bit. Can you see now? There, there. That's too far. Uh, nice and quiet, please, and action, Wombie Wombie. Wombly. Wombly. Great. And you're enjoying it, Margaret and uh, Natalie, <laughs> enjoying the Wombly Wombly. And door. Wombly. Flaps. Reacting, Michael. It's serious business. OK, I'm going out, yeah. OK, you go out. And um, you, that's great, start reacting. And I think, Margaret, take a look at the two of them and decide to go yourself. Nice. Walking out, he stands up, we tilt it up. And the flaps shut. Take her hands. She stands. And a little tilt up there, wonderful. And we cut. All right, save the fire. Good, let's shoot. Rolling. And action. OK. Give us a big wobbly, Michael, towards him, and then a big laugh. Wobbly. Wobbly. <laughs> Door. Wombly. 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 Wash it. OK. Close flaps. Cut. Very good from here. Let's have a look at the gate on that and then we'll move on. All right. Nice slow push in all the way, lasting maybe about seven seconds. Okay. Let's have a look at one of those. Watch the cable over the track as we go and enjoying the moment and action. Coming up. Right. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Let's see a bit more of your face. And we just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing yeah, and we'll go in on the zoom at the same time so we finish up with a totally out of focus <laughs> bit of something. No, no, seriously. Oh, really? It'll be just a total right. blur at the end. All right. Oh, that should be nice to bring it from that side, which is sort of the fire was sort of on that side anyway. So why don't we put the five over there, mm -hmm. the five over there with the black wrap and we'll just start playing with it and punch a few holes in it and get a total mismatch, but that'll show you what a total mismatch looks like. The last approach to lighting was for the final shot of the sequence. To keep the source of light very isolated, black wrap was placed over a 5K Fresnel. The 5K was patched through a flicker box to give the irregular flicker pattern. To direct the narrow beams of light, small holes were punched into the black wrap to focus the light exactly where it was needed. The main part we want to cut is on the back here. And we need to open up <clears throat> on the other side. I want to see light behind them when, when they're in this position here, the final position you're in, where you're nuzzling, nuzzling heads. We want to make sure we've got a little splash in here. Yeah, that's it. Good. Just that end position of yours now. That's it. That's right on the money, guys. That's good. We've lost something here with that light position. Did that come up a bit too much or something? Um, See, we had you take your nuzzle, your end nuzzle position there. That's right, your head was down more, so you just, just feel the light in your eyes. Take your head down even a little more. That's it. So just feeling the light in your eyes. Yeah, that's the position you've got to try and hit at the end. That's great. As previously, full 85 gel was used on the 5K to keep the colour matched to firelight. Finally, the flame bar was brought in manually to give some fire ambience and flicker at the bottom of frame. Right. 
something like that. Yeah, good, that'll work well. Action. heaven on a stick to me. That yep. was the bestest yet. Thanks for going again. <laughs> All right. That was absolutely wonderful. You just yes. check the gate on that, make sure it's clear and uh, we'll mush on. Just on. Can we roll on. Could you imagine that with a soundtrack? Whack okay. the old soundtrack in there. There won't be a dry eye in the house. Great. Everyone will be going home buying flowers for each other. <laughs> oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm sorry that the workshop hasn't been long, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, the students are so enthusiastic and so knowledgeable already and uh, it's great to see them all swapping roles and you know, one day you've got an operator who's using the wheels for the first time and then you've got a different operator the next day and the person okay. that was operating on day one is the grip on the second day it's a fabulous way to learn i envy them i wish i had that opportunity myself when i was younger guys clear good yeah. all right well thank you very much everybody i've had a wonderful two days and thank you all thank very you. much thank you all around it's been great Got a dances with mice or something we've got. <laughs> you know, you always wonder, oh, God, people say we're going to be shooting on video before too much longer. Oh, what a thought, shooting on video. But it's not going to happen. What you've got is extraordinary high-definition, extraordinary high-tech quality equipment that can only enhance what we're doing, and it's fabulous tools at our fingertips, extraordinary things. The tricks we'll be able to do in the future are just... It's unbelievable, the mind boggles. The younger people coming into the industry now are coming into it at a magnificent time to be able to use this. God knows what we're gonna be doing in 10 years time.